All right, here we go. We're here with Elvis Andrews of the Texas Rangers. Elvis, a.k.a. Matatan. What's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> just finished my workout today. Today got some upper body. I you know, just crushing the weights and uh, you know nothing. Man, enjoy life. As I hear you, man. I hear you, man. I appreciate you taking the time, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, obviously, uh, first of all, man, how are you and your family holding up, man, during this time, man? We're doing good, man. Thank God, uh, we are doing good. Uh, everybody's healthy. Uh, here in my house, uh, you know, my clothes ones are good. Everybody's healthy too, so we're, we're pretty much, uh, you know, quarantining ourselves. You know, doing doing our job uh, as a, you know, as a fellow American that we are. We have to, you know, find a way to, you know, to cut this virus. And then the best thing is, you know, just isolate ourselves, stay at home, uh, uh, and just, you know, keep praying for, you know, these. Uh, horrendous virus uh you know to get out of here no i hear you man i hear you it's uh it's crazy because uh, you like you said it's 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 this is a world thing this is happening all around the world and it's happening all at the same time which makes it even crazier man how are you uh dealing with uh, everything as far as your family back home in venezuela man like or, or like how, what's the what's the atmosphere back home like man back there uh yeah well i mean uh, the there's nothing good about it but i'm you know i'm guessing there's so many craziness that it's been going on in my country for the past five years uh that the virus is kind of like just adding up to everything that's going on out there uh but you know my family's good thank god uh they uh you know find a way to isolate themselves also you know something that you know, I talked to my whole family. Uh, we had kind of like a, a family meeting uh, a week ago, and, and it was about this, you know, like knowing that every day, especially if you're watching the TV, something new is going to come, something new from the virus or, or finding ways to treat the virus is going to uh, come and go every single day. So for us, the best we can do is isolate, stay home, you know, take those prevention. And then, you know, when you're home, it's hard to to get contained, you know, or, or like to get the virus. So I think that was one of the first things that we did. But, uh, you know, besides that, everybody's good, man. Uh, you know, like I say, our country, my country, Venezuela, has been crazy for the past, especially two to three years. Uh, people is already uh, living like in a quarantine, uh, quarantine down there, sorry. And uh, so, you know, not nothing new for them. I think there's it's been a lot of crazy going on not only with the virus, but with the country. Uh, but they're good. They, they, you know, they help. They're healthy. They're, they're good to go. And they're always optimistic about, you know, being positive. I think that's something that I try to rely on, on my family the most, you know, trying to get uh, something positive of every uh, circumstance or every experience. And uh, we're going through a really bad one. Uh, and, you know, I think it's the best thing we can do is be optimistic and, and be positive and finding ways to, you know, having, you know, enjoy and, and, and having fun uh, on those days that you stay in a home. Uh, that's, 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 uh... Those are those are you know very pungent points that you make and 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 you're right, <laughs> you know you're right man and um, it's crazy because home is where they always say home is where the heart is right and that's where we spend a lot of time at home um, we have a lot of memories at home our first memories are at home uh, our deepest moments are at home uh, for you man what is the you know what have you found yourself doing more now than ever before. Uh, for me, I mean, one of the things that I've been, you know, doing uh, in this type of isolation, uh, quarantine that I've done with my family, uh, it's been keep learning, man. I think every every day uh, is a great opportunity for you to learn at something, at anything, uh, from reading, you know, from reading a book, reading a magazine, something, the internet, you know, any topic that you like, kind of go deeper and then trying to find more knowledge about it. Uh, you know, same team uh, for me is enjoy my family, man. I think that if it wasn't because of this virus, you know, I wouldn't be here at home. I'd probably be here right now in Seattle. So, you know, I really, like I said, I always take that, that positive mindset and optimistic mindset where, 
you know, whatever I am right now, I'm going to try to get the best, you know, I'm going to stay positive and, and, and use that time uh, in a good thing, which is, you know, having fun with my kids, get to see them, uh, teach them, see them grow, uh, you know, having conversations uh, with my wife about a lot of things that, you know, I didn't pay attention because yeah. you know, we were in the we were in the daily hustling. So, you know, it's always great, man, to, to like stop, uh, reset. Uh, I think this, this isolation, this quarantine, that's what it makes me uh, realize or, or, or open my eyes and just reset uh, and, and trying to go step by step uh, instead of keep going and, and keep flying like we were probably two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I hear you. So speaking of home, where's your favorite place to sit at? At home, where do you love to just say, you know what, this is my spot right here. You know what I'm saying? Where's your favorite place to sit? Uh, well, this past week has been my office. Uh, I never spend as much time in my office because, you know, especially during the season, I don't, I don't have too much time to be in the office. Uh, yeah, I'm literally, I'm literally come and go from the house. Uh, but right now, I'm really enjoying my office, man. I've been able to, uh, like I say, you know, I have quite a few books. Uh, here at home, uh, a few that I took from you has been training. <clears throat> so, it's, you know, it's a great time for me to, uh, I need my, you know, my alone time too. And then, you know, that alone time is very early in the morning. I'm trying to, you know, wake up six, seven in the morning, uh, you know, kind of chill out, start meditating too. So it's a new thing for me. So I do meditate a little bit and then trying to read for 30 to 45 minutes. And, and, and that's like the beginning of my day, you know, and, it's excited, you know, it's a lot of things that I'm learning and, and it gets my day going on, you know, it gives me, it gives me purpose uh, every single day and I think what we're going through right now, that's, that's the main thing, you know, trying to find purpose every single day that you're going through and it, it makes, you know, this isolation, this quarantine a lot easier. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. So you said meditate, you know, we start talking about the mental skills and visualization and imagery and there's a ton of different ways to meditate. How does Elvis Andrews, how does he meditate? What's your what's your go-to method? Well, I mean, one of the things, like I said, that literally five days ago was the first time I meditated, or like at least try to meditate, because I think that's like one of the toughest things to do. Mm -hmm, <laughs> now mm -hmm. I'm really, you know, and by uh, uh, even, even people that, that, you know, meditate and doesn't, uh, on a big league level, uh, you know, so to speak. Uh, but I think, you know, one of the things that I'm doing is like actually learning, like, you know, like searching the meaning of meditation. Like, like you say, that there's a lot of different ways of meditate. So for me, that's what I've been doing. This first week is about like, you know, Googling and searching uh, everything that I can about meditation. And then when I'm ready, you know, and they know about this topic, and then I think it's gonna be easier for me because I will understand it uh, in a deeply, in a deeply way. Yeah, there's um, and this is a like a, a conversation for a whole different podcast. But one of the original meanings of that word meditation is, you know, you know how a cow, a cow has four stomachs, and that word comes from that concept. So a cow, when a cow chews food, right, it'll it'll keep on chewing its food. And then it would almost like swallow the food and throw it back up and then keep chewing it. And that's where that word meditation comes from. It's, it's taking a concept, taking an idea and continually thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? And so I think a lot of people think that meditation is just like, Ooh, like you got to get crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it, it, yeah, it's just thinking deeply about something, visualizing something um, that, that uh, at a deep level. And again, there's many ways to get there, but man, that, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, you, you're Elvis, man, you're one of the most hype dudes. Like you got a ball of energy, bro. Like you, you always have energy. Like a lot of times, you know, you, we hear Elvis before we see Elvis, you know what I'm saying? And, and where, where, where does that come from, dude? Where, where, whether that's you walking in with your, your, your surround sound. For those of y'all that don't know, man, this dude is the only person I know that walks around with a, with a, a mini, a mini concert hall around him, man. Where, 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 now, where does that come from, man? Well, I always have this is, you know, since young age, uh, I always been annoying and <laughs> I talking and, 
in getting to know, you know, I'm really noisy about about that. Uh, I always, you know, I was, I always been since a little kid. Uh, what about the music? You know, I just love music, man. I think one of the things that me and you, uh, or you and me, we talked before is about always finding or starting the day with something that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to start a day. And, and I mean, for people that know me, uh, you know, even here at home, uh, they know like if you're coming around me, it's going to be music around. Yep. You know? So yep. that's something that relaxes me. The, the, Takes me to the to the you know being in a good mood. Even my wife do it whenever she see me like <laughs> not in a good mood or like a little upset. She like she learned already. She just plays some music uh -huh. and just give me some time, and she knows I'm gonna get back back on track. <laughs> so I think that's that's for me that's the biggest thing, man. I think if if I can win the the battle of every day wake him up and be in a good mood, I mean the rest of the day just follow. Uh, and, and it's something that is not easy something that I still bottle because there's some days that even if I play music, I still in a bad mood when I go to the whole park. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, you know, I minimize those days uh, through my whole career. And, and it's all about, you know, having joy, you know, have joy of what you do, of, you know, your work, uh, have passion for it. And, you know, music for me, is easier for me to mix everything together when I'm listening to music. So that's why, I mean, you know, it'd be, it'd be a bit dumb if I don't listen to music, knowing that yeah. it actually solved a lot of problems in my life. It's crazy, it's, it's crazy, man. Actually, we, we did a podcast, podcast, I think, a couple years ago with a, a composer, um, Dr. Gregory Klug, and it's crazy how even you know when even when you're in your mother's womb you start picking up musical preferences and things start happening happening to you you know on a cognitive level with your brain based on music and music is a very powerful thing man um and it, it's it's i think for me personally i'd love to hear your thoughts on this but i i feel like i think one of the reasons why uh, music is so powerful is because it allows you to connect with the artist it allows you con to connect with that artist that, that or that composer that made that music on a on a soul level, like on a d way deeper level in a way that you can't with words. What do you think about that? I mean, uh, you hit it right, you know, right on. I mean, especially the music that we listen uh, to, uh, especially you know, for me, it's like so important to listen uh, the right music before you know I'm gonna perform. So before the game, like you see me listen reggaeton and all the craziness, but. Whenever I'm before the game, it's like those five to ten minutes that I need to like, like regroup, reset, and, and just kind of like energize my my soul and my brain and my heart, uh, because that's what that's what is gonna get me through in the game. It's gonna make me, you know, believe in what I've been working or what I've been doing. You know, is your passion? Is it, what is inside that is gonna show up out there uh, in the external life? So for me, it's big, man, because. You know, music connects you to your heart. You know, it goes deep from the singer all the way to your ears. And then you just, you know, that's why the reason sometimes you listen to music and you get chills. Mm -hmm. You get, you know, it's like, wow, it's like so powerful. Uh, the music, you know, has the power to move everything inside of you. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, I choose uh, music. And, and, and I mean, it's not that I always done it, but it's, you know, one of the things I think I start doing it even more. Uh, when when I went to my first World Series, that I wasn't able to control, you know, my my heartbeat. I wasn't able to control my emotions. It was like everything so fast. Everything was unbelievable. What I was going through, and it was hard for me to maintain, you know, the inside, uh, you know, my heartbeat down. And I remember going to my locker, just you know, just trying something new, <laughs> and. Uh, and just play music, and, and and that was literally the only thing that he was able to just get my heartbeat all the way down to normal. That's awesome. Uh, and that's what I that's what I ended up doing the whole World Series. You know, like I actually put the my iPod like behind the dugout, and mm -hmm. every time, every inning when I come in, uh, that was the first thing. Like I will let the music, you know, going on, and I will put it on, and and that was literally like the only thing for me to like get me down and, and after I learned that that's what I always say I always singing like, if you see me playing I'm usually like singing just to get my heartbeat and everything to the level that I want to be yeah that's cool man from the man named Elvis it makes so much sense man that you you and music 
go hand in hand, man. It makes so much sense, man. I, I finally figured you out, bro. <laughs> hey, so so we talked about music. You know, we talked about meditation. You know, having that time uh, where you're reading, you're challenging your mind. Um, you know, what what else? Uh, right now, uh, if you could, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this for people who are listening to this. Uh, let's say, um, you know, Texas Rangers fans. Um, what encouragement would you give people uh, during this time, man? You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's a different day and age. Um, you know, we know that trouble doesn't last always. What advice are you giving people apart from music, apart from meditation? You know what I'm saying? Apart from the obvious what advice are you giving people, man, to to help relieve stress during this time? Well, I mean, I think the the, the best thing to do uh, is literally like go to like a you know go to like do your alone time you know go go to a place where it's only you you know it can be any different place in your house and just you know just, that's the thing about meditation like like let your let your thoughts let your head you know bring it like let everything go out like don't don't reserve it don't suppress it just let it out and i, I mean literally your body your thoughts your you know your conscious and your subconscious mind will tell you you know what to do i think that it's important to you know especially right now do something that you know brings you joy but i'm not saying you know just go out there and party go outside and party i mean just knowing what we're going through you know it's a crisis that is affecting Everybody, especially, you know, the older people, but even the youngest one, you know, you never know what can happen to you. So, I mean, it, it's about, you know, for me, being aware of what's happening. Uh, imagine that if you're going outside and you get the virus, you know, and you're coming back, you can, you can infect your mom, you can infect your grandmother, you can infect your dad. And just think the same way as, you know, you're doing that to somebody in the street. You know, imagine that person in the street is your dad, is your mom, is that is that person that you love the most in this world, and and I think that will help us, uh, you know, stay at home because I think you know, especially with the young kids, they're going outside because they're boring and and they have no meaning of you know, reading is boring or meditating is for all people, you know, it's <laughs> like you can find so many things to do at home. There's so many things to do at home, and it's not like you have to stay at home for years you know it's like literally you know we they you know there's experts on, on this topic where it's like if we can stay a couple of weeks at home you know we can cut uh, you know the spread of this virus so it's about you know finding something fun to do at home man like that's one of the things like me growing up uh we have so many uh you know board games and, and that's literally what i'm doing right now i'm playing Two days ago, I was playing Monopoly with my brother. Oof. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, who's who, what? Hey, who? What favorite board game? What's your favorite one? Uh, Monopoly for sure. Did, 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 have you guys had any family fights over Monopoly? Oh, I'm. I mean, I used to when I was a you know kid, like <laughs> 15 years ago or 20 years ago, and I mean, literally, I played two days ago with my brother Errol, and he beat me again. So lucky. And I was, all the memories when I was like 10 came back right away, man. And I have to like, okay, hold on, I'm 30 years old, chill out, it's just a game. I mean, kind of like, you know, like calm, calm down myself, but I was so pissed that my brother beat me, you know, in online 25 years later, or 20 years later, beat me Monopoly again. Uh, but, you know, going back to what I was talking, it's just, you know, find something to do, man. There's, you know, we all have passion, we all... We all have things to do, but this time is great time for us to like grow, you know, and in the mental side. I think it's something that we never work. We work so much on on the physical. We work so much of like social, but we never work on the mental side. And mm -hmm. and I mean that's the biggest thing right now. I mean that's that's what's gonna make you the best person and the best kids in your school. If your mental toughness is high. You're gonna be the coolest kid because you you will figure everybody <laughs> out, and you'll be the coolest kid. Believe me. So uh, it, it's about you know having fun and enjoy enjoy your family, have those nice conversations, even if they're boring. Believe me, 
When you have nothing to do, you will find something to talk. You right. and get to know yourself. So I mean, that's that's what I'm doing here, and you know, I'm enjoying a lot. I, I'm I, I'm not getting bored. I'm I'm doing something different every day, and there's a lot of things to do. That's awesome. Hey, kids, I hope you heard that. If, if you're if, if, if you're listening, I hope you heard what Elvis just said right there. If you're the most mentally tough, you're going to be the coolest, too. You know what I'm saying? What uh, Hey, so a lot of people are in. I asked Frazier this earlier. A lot of people are in, you know, at home right now watching movies and stuff like that. Um, I asked him a different question. I'm going to ask you one. What what uh, is the funniest movie you've ever watched, man? What's the what's the one movie that when you watch it, man, you just start crying laughing, dude? Uh, too many, man. Uh, you gotta give me, uh, give me, give me three, give me three, give me three. Well, it's it's tough because I mean a bunch of them are actually like in Spanish. Well, <laughs> like Spanish movie, like, give, give them to like, us. Like, uh, like a Spanish comic. There's one that calls uh, El Conde del Guacharo. He's like, <laughs> he's like Kevin Hart of USA. Hey, that just sounds funny, bro. That just sounds funny. Can you yeah. say that again? Can you say that again? El Conde del Guacharo. <laughs> He's like a like a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but that dude, he made like like ten movies from you know like U.S. movie, but he makes it you know in the funny in the funny side. And you know I love that guy. He's like you know he's like a legend back home, <laughs> and uh, he makes so many funny movies. Even that I watch it until this day, is amazing. And I mean, and you know I just mentioned him, Kevin Hart. So whatever Kevin Hart. Uh, from you know documentaries to like all his talk show, he just I, yeah he, he can say hello to me and I'll talk crack. So <laughs> you know he, he's he, he's my number one right now. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Well, man, hey, we uh, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate the time. Um, you know that made me laugh, man. Um, just these twenty minutes, man, with you, man. Um, what what closing words do you have, man? Um, is there any thoughts that have been on your mind that you can't shake right now that you want to share with everybody before we close? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be literally what I've been talking to you, uh, you know, today. Uh, just trying to, and that's what I think that I'm going to, I'm probably going to need your help through the season. Uh and it's something that I'm really going to talk to the team to see if we can work I mean, through the community about this, you know, about like, you know, the mental health uh, Mental health is so important, mm -hmm. uh, especially now with the social media, everything is about social media, you know, for all the young guys, uh, and not even that young, I mean, even guys of my age, people of my age, uh, it's all about like, it's all about what social people they don't even know you, you know, 100%. Uh, whatever they think or mean of you, that, that it, right now, like, in this time, it's like, that is so important that we kind of kind of lose track of, you know, actually people that matters, you know, mm -hmm. the, the people that actually know you, that, you know, have that self-care uh, and, you know, self-awareness of, you know, you're an amazing human being. I mean, we're all different. We all, it doesn't matter if, you know, if, if I'm Hispanic or you're, you know, American or from Korea or Japan, like at the end, we're all human beings and, and yes. we have to find a way to respect and, and get to know, you know, different culture. That's the only way you're going to get to know me if you know my culture, where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, that's something that I would love to like do. And I mean, you know, trying to get more knowledge about it, how we can spread and then, and, and do something for this community. I think that'd be really awesome uh, to to help uh, the future of this, you know, this country and the future of you know the world. In you know, seeing in the big picture, you know, to have more you know self awareness of you know self love. Absolutely. Uh, and not not and not everything have to be around social media or like you know, tweeters and likes and comments. You mm -hmm. know? No, you're right, man. And that and that, I mean, you said it right there. It's it's. It's one of those things. I think Michael Phelps actually did a uh, an interview the other day, and he was just talking about uh, even with you know our current world situation uh, about mental health and and where that's going to lead, especially with the athletes, right? And so it's like it, you know what you're saying hits on so many levels because not only do we have a future generation that's steeped in what you just said, right? The likes and the follows and all of this, that, and the other. But now you compound it with what's going on in the world. 
And it's just like, man, you know, we have an awesome opportunity. People like you with a tremendous platform have an awesome opportunity, man, to literally change the world uh, with your with your words and with your works. You know what I'm saying? And so I agree with you, man. And so, you know, let's let's do it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's, I mean, I'm, I'm all forward, man. That's something that, you know, in the last few years, uh, you know, learning and, and, you know, being really uh, – wanting to get more knowledge about everything, you know, not only baseball, you know, about life and, and myself and, and others. I think that's really important, you know, uh, getting to know the, the, the past. I think that's something that lately, you know, you forget, you know, about learning about history, about your country, your city, your, commu- uh, your community, your country, you know, your race. I think it's so important because, you know, like you read in all the nice books, you know, all the smart people, the, you know, the billionaires and, the trillionaire, I mean, they all have something in common, man. They read, they they, they mm-hmm. want to learn the past because I think that's the only way to know where where we're gonna go, where the future is, is knowing the past. So I think that's really important. You know, it's a great message for you know the future of the kids. You know, like our future in this country and in the world to to get to know about history and finding the way you know to to make it interesting for them because I know. Especially, you know, speaking by my own uh, experience, you know, I used to hate history back home. When yeah. I was, you know, now when, when I was in, in school and high school, whatever. But it, I mean, we can find ways, man, to to you know to teach and, and, and to make them understand how important it is. Yeah. You know, especially now going on with the social media, where they think that the past, you know, the all the history is not important because everything is about you know a platform and the in the social world and all mm-hmm. that, but believe me, the guys that own everything, they know the you know, they know the history of everything. So I think it's very important to open eyes to to all those kids, uh, and make them understand that everything is related in this world, you know. Yeah. Hey, man, you sounded like a professor, bro. We, hey, we're going to start having to call you Professor Elvis, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> Be easy now. Be uh, easy. That. That's my brother's nickname. That's my older brother's nickname, Professor. 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 Hey, man, you next, bro. You over here dropping too much knowledge, man. I mean, come on, brother. Come on now. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a dad, man. I got to put it on my homework. <laughs> even for me, but I'm more special for my kids, man. I want to I wanna raise them and give them the, the best information and all the knowledge I can. And knowing that, you know, in the future, they will be, you know, good, good human beings and good people. And they'll be ready for anything. No, I hear you, man. Hey, man. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time, and I know that uh, I know that you made some people smile and you warmed some hearts today, man. Thank you again, brother. All right, brother. Have a great day, man.